welcome back to my channel. Um, this is just a quick update video on um, the situation with the social worker and where I'm at. So I had another meeting with the social worker last Thursday and also someone from uh, Autism Sussex attended as well. It was a Zoom meeting and it was really helpful having a person from Autism Sussex there because I felt it sort of lowered the temperature a bit and made me a bit less stressed. Um, and it was a much more, I felt it was a much more less stressful meeting. Um, it was really looking at my financial capacity um, and um, my support, my, for person who, um, who I know from Autism Sussex and I've known her for a long time, told the social worker that she feels I do lack <coughs> financial understanding because although I um, do my online shopping, um, every every week, my dad does my food shopping for me, but um, he goes to the shops and does my food shopping. But I um, you know, I get other needed supplies online. Like I can't go to the library at the moment because I'm OCD. So obviously I'm I'm an avid bookworm, and books are my life. So you know, I get books because I read so many books. I'm gonna have so many books to give away to charity um, at some point. But anyway, that's another subject. But um, yeah, so you know, I, I I get things you know and stuff for my crafting and stuff like that. So you know, I, I do buy stuff online once a week. You know, to my hobbies basically. Um, otherwise, I go absolutely crazy stuck at home. Um, and but I stick to um, the only sense in which I have understanding about it is that I stick rigidly to a sum of money that I was to a fixed sum, a fixed weekly sum, a sort of an allowance, if you like, which I was told I could spend on my hobbies um, way back in 2010. Um, and because I'm autistic, I will stick to that rigidly. In actual fact, I spent somewhat under for some I was given, just because I like I. It just makes me feel like safe financially, um, like I'm not going to overspend. But that that is kind of I guess um, because I don't I don't actually have instinctive understanding of money or finances. Um, I will stick rigidly to an amount someone tells me to spend, but I can't really adjust for changes of circumstances. Um, you know, because I don't know my incomings and outgoings, I can't read bank statements, I can't read, um, I have no understanding of money, I can confuse numbers such as 100 and 1,000, um, because I'm being dyscalculic, um, and my dad keeps an eye on my finances, so to ensure I don't get into financial trouble and that, um, everything's fine, he, he regularly checks my bank statements to ensure that I'm not overspending, and, um, he tops me up if needed and I need that oversight and that's what my dad does at the moment to make sure that I'm financially sound but obviously when he's no longer around who's going to do that um I need that support and my dad does so much for me right now he kind of like scaffolds like me really and obviously when my dad's no longer around I'm going to basically well be in the absolute pits if I don't receive significant support from someone or other um, to do all what my dad's been so far doing for me. Um, so that's kind of what the meeting support with the social worker was and as I said my support worker was telling him that she feels I do lack understanding financially um, because the social worker was seeming to latch on to the fact that obviously I can, when I said I can budget but actually I I did send him an email afterwards trying to explain I didn't mean I, I, I didn't mean I actually understand budgeting. It's a very kind of rigid interpretation of how much I could spend per week. It's not like a true understanding of budgeting because I sort of feel that maybe I um, didn't explain things adequately enough. I feel people can misconstrue sometimes what I say, or sometimes they give a picture of greater competence because of the words I use, and obviously people can then misinterpret it. So maybe I shouldn't have actually said I can budget because that gives a wrong impression. Because actually, when you think about it. What I meant by that was I stick to a, a fixed sum of money per week. I don't mean I can actually budget in a true sense of a word because I have no understanding of finances. But that, I cleared it up later in an email. Um, yeah, so anyway, he, he, he spoke to my dad yesterday on the phone and my dad said that he felt he was quite productive. Apparently, in this conversation, the social worker did listen, but he said his hands were tied because obviously, like, it's not him making the decisions and there's only so much he can do, but he can relay the information to his manager, his boss, um, which he's going to do. My dad explained to him how much he does for me, you know, how he does everything from financial oversight to, you know, cleaning, everything my dad does, you know. Um, so, yeah, the social worker's going to be speaking to me again um, next, in about a week's time as well to carry out on, it's basically like an assessment to sort of find out what support I'm going to need when my dad's along here, which is a lot of support. And
and also the other thing is the benefits issue and who's going to fill out the forms because I go into absolute meltdown over them and I, ha I can't fill them out myself because my mental problems mean I can't. So I literally need someone to fill out the forms for me. I'm obviously happy to tell that person about my issues. That's not a problem. Like I can tell them everything I struggle with, but I need to have trust that they're going to fill it out. They're going to do the actual writing for legwork. They're actually going to do all of that. And my only involvement is to tell them, if need be, about my disability so that they understand what to write and the extent of the problem. But I do need to kind of trust that person to do a good job. Um, that's an ongoing concern. But I'm going to carry, I'm going to speak to the social worker about that again next time just to ask you know, what can be done about that. He keeps on mentioning Citizens Advice Bureau, but um, they're, impossible. they're really hard to get hold of. Like, if you try and phone them up, you want to phone for, like, ages. Just And that, for me, with someone like me with mental problems, I just can't put up with that. It's too overwhelming. And I, I would need support to deal with it. And, like, currently, I don't have that support. The other issue, because they, because basically, I'm, they're still needing to find a support worker for me because there's a, so, a support worker shortage, and that's another issue. And, obviously, I can't see someone, anyone face-to-face -face anyway because of my extreme OCD at the moment. So, yeah, what's going to happen with benefit forms in the future? Still, I'm not quite sure about that. And that needs to be sorted out because that's a big worry. But at least it's, it's important that we're getting this conversation started now um, because, you know, while there's still time, even though it is stressful. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to move over to video number two now because I also want to, as well as going through your comments, I also, if there's time, I also just want to mention another meeting I attended this week, which was quite interesting. So, I'm moving over to video number two now.